So today we'll be reviewing a set of power desktop slash bookshelf speakers called the transparent ones. Uh, they're made by a company named Vanitu. So named the transparent ones because they're supposed to be transparent to your audio signal. Or in other words, the idea is that they pass the audio signal straight from your device or your source to your ears, interfering with the signal in as minimal way as possible. So now these speakers sell for 500 bucks, which to me is quite a lot to spend for computer speakers, but I was curious how much better these things would actually sound compared to what I'm used to with my normal desktop setup and see if they would be really worth it because I listen to a ton of music on my computer and after reading a lot of very positive reviews online about these from uh, all kinds of different sources I decided to give them a try out. So Vanitu is a small company started by a couple of audio enthusiasts from Seattle, one of whom wrote a master's thesis on acoustic radiation characteristics of shorthorns. So it seems to me anyway that they, they would know a little bit about audio. And I'll tell you this just because although you may have not heard of the company, uh, a lot of really great high-end speakers um, come from these boutique style manufacturers who are not typically known by the uh, general public. You know, companies like Din Audio, HSU Research, Paradigm, uh, Martin Logan, some of those kind of companies, and they're, they're ones even a lot more obscure than that. But anyway, I came across the transparent ones as I was looking for a really nice high quality set of speakers to kind of use with my computer to replace my M-Audio AV40s which recently crapped out on me. You know, I came across these and they seemed like a really nice solution. So first I'll cover the features of these speakers that make them a great solution for digital audio sources like your computer or phone and uh, give you my sound impressions and a couple quick audio samples. Uh, but then I'll tell you why I think these are really an excellent set of speakers for anyone looking for a super versatile pair of powered speakers that sound just about perfect for a desktop setup or for filling a medium sized room or bedroom with really nice audio. So here's a shot of the speakers that, uh, out of the box. You can see the really nice speakers. I mentioned, as I mentioned earlier, these are fairly compact speakers that house five and a quarter inch drivers in the front with matching passive radiators in the back, uh, along with one inch tweeters. The, the, measure, the speakers measure just six and a half inches across, 10 inches tall, and seven and a half inches deep. But they feel really, really dense. In fact, the speaker with the amp in it weighs 12 pounds, and the other passive speaker weighs 11, a good amount heavier than the Audio Engine A5s that I uh, recently tested. The end result is that these can play down to 49 hertz, which is a which is very low for these speakers. Uh, for speakers these size, typically they produce somewhere in the 60, 70 hertz range. The audio engines actually go down to 50, but they're a little bit more muddier. But I'm not going to get to a whole comparison in this one. Just but it's just something to kind of note. You know, they get they play so well down low that even to the point that I was able to get rid of the subwoofer under my desk that I was using in my old setup, uh, which is fine because it only worked half the time anyway for some reason. You know, the amount of bass response from just these two speakers alone is actually quite impressive and surprising while sounding really, really well balanced with the rest of the frequency range and sound levels that these uh, put out. But I will say that these sounded like I was blown away by how these sounded when I was watching movies on my computer, especially compared to what I'm used to. Um, but in any event, I'll, I'll get into my overall sound impressions more in just a minute. Uh, in my opinion, the magic of these speakers are really in their inputs. They have the ability to directly take any digital audio source, USB, coax, or optical input with no external DAC or sound card needed. Uh, using any one of these digital type inputs rather than the typical 3.5 millimeter analog audio output that most people, including myself, use makes a big difference in your signal to noise ratio feeding into your speakers. So if you see, I actually use the optical digital out on the back of my computer and plug it directly into the back of the Vanitus. Actually, for the first time in my computing life, uh, I'm using that, this output in Windows. Now this keeps the signal purely digital and is only converted to an analog signal at the very last moment by the DSP inside the amp in these, just before it outputs to your speaker drivers. So the digital signal processor is really what allows Vanitu to match the amp inside perfectly to the nuances of the, uh, the drivers they use, making all the components of the system really work well together to give you super clear, super clean audio that sounds absolutely fantastic. There are also these tone controls in the back which give you a lot of flexibility for the placement of the speakers your room dimensions and acoustics, and for your personal preferences as well. This is important to note because the higher you tend to go up in the speaker food chain, the more room dimensions and speaker placement start playing a more critical role in the sound differences between speakers. I would also like to mention a bit more about their versatility. Since they have all these digital inputs and power outlet included right here into the back, there are a bunch of different scenarios you could use these speakers in. For example, you could plug in an Airport Express directly into the back and play music from your iPhone or iPad you know, straight to the speakers. Uh, you can plug in a Bluetooth music receiver, which Vantu actually sells one that plugs into here and then you have Bluetooth enabled speakers. And, um, you know, they can also be paired beautifully with something like an Apple TV to make a great sounding but simple home theater solution in places where your space might be limited but you still want really great sound. Um, you know, with the amount of inputs on the back of these things, making them so 
so flexible to any variety of listening scenarios and the very nice build quality and of the internal components as well. I feel these are, are really a pair of speakers I'll be able to always be able to put to use in my home for years to come even if I end up taking them off my computer. Um, incidentally, they do come with a three year warranty. Um, so finally, let's talk a little bit about their sound quality. I've touched on it some earlier and although it's senseless to sample audio through YouTube and a speaker review, I'm gonna give you a small taste of that here nonetheless. So actually a little change of plans on that. I'm not gonna demo the audio through um, the YouTube video here because I, I, I tried it and I record it through my um, camera and the mic on my camera just really doesn't do the speakers justice at all. It just sounded kind of really, it just really sounded bad. I don't want to give you a bad impression of it. So, you know, hopefully you'll just take my word for it on how I'm telling you how the audio sounds, which is, you know, really, really good overall. Everything just really well balanced. And um, my girlfriend even commented on it when I was sampling some other speakers against it. She, I didn't even ask her. She just like, those other speakers sound way better. You know, it's to the point that I just, really like listening to music on it, you want to just keep listening to more stuff. And in fact, I signed up for a uh, subscription to Tidal because they offer, um, you know, they stream their music. You can pick the FLAC option, which is lossless FLAC format. It's really super high bit rate, so you get all kind of the detail. Hear all the different detail in the music and stuff, so. You know, I, um, I watched a couple movies, not the whole movies, but I sampled a couple movies just to kind of see what they sound like. And, you know, it's not surround sound, obviously, it's just stereo, but it made me notice a lot of different things like action movies, all the explode, everything was just on point. Everything sounded nice. Dialogue was really, really clear. Um, you know, it kind of made me realize how bad my 5.1 system is, unfortunately. Now it just makes me want to kind of upgrade those two. But yeah, these even just these Vanitus, just the stereo imaging and the just the stereo, just being in stereo mode, the quality was way better than my my home theater setup. So I was really happy with that. Music sounds great, and and gaming. Gaming sounded good too, you know, it was uh, definitely an improvement over the AM audios, but, you know, while gaming, unless you're, you're not really usually doing a lot of discerning listening during gaming, you're kind of usually just involved in the action. So, I mean, no complaints on gaming, but I wouldn't say, like, they blew me away from for gaming, for sure. But definitely, they sounded nice, so. Overall, I just enjoyed listening to the Vantus a lot more than the Audio Engine A5 Pluses that I had in recently. You know, although those were great sound of speakers and they, they sounded good, especially after they were broken in, they were just a little bit harsher to me, um, not quite as clean, and uh, you know, I definitely had some listening fatigue after listening to them for a little while or at the higher volume levels. And that, that's one thing worth mentioning, because if you need the speakers for a large or extra large room setting, the audio engines might serve you a little bit better. As my only kind of complaint about the Vantu is that, were that they wouldn't really play extremely, extremely loud, but certainly louder than I was able to stand, you know, sitting two feet away from them. And uh, it definitely filled up my, they can fill up my condo, fill, gonna fill up a medium room really well. Um, and one big difference is these sounded great at all different volume levels, low and high. They kind of kept all their detail and richness, you know, but the audio engines definitely, it's without a doubt, they, they play louder. But I, I prefer the sound of these. Um, and the audio engines are actually have a little bit larger speaker cabinet as well, so it's just something to know. But in the end, these were plenty loud enough. Now, for $500, these are not cheap speakers, especially since my previous pair were under 150 bucks, um, but the difference really is night and day. I don't really consider myself an audiophile as there are so many things I realize I don't know when I kind of go and visit some of these technical audio forums online, but I do know what sounds good to, to me. And if I'm impressed with something enough, I definitely don't mind spending as much money as my budget allows me to. At 500 bucks, the target market for these is right at the overlap of where high-end consumer meets the low end of the audiophile market, so that kind of slice of the segment there, which is right where I kind of consider myself. In my opinion, these are the most versatile and best sounding uh, powered bookshelf speakers you can get, and are just about the ideal solution for desktop computer users who enjoy listening to lots of music. They're definitely the best speakers I've ever owned, and I highly recommend them. That's all I got to say, guys. Thanks a lot for watching, and you all take care.